uh, I gave a similar version of this talk at FOSDEM. Um, uh, pretty much the same talk, it's just an updated version. It's, ju it's just a general update of what we do in the Asahi SIG in Fedora. Um, and when I arrived in um, Brussels that time and I went to do the presentation, uh, when I connected HDMI to my Mac Mini and it, it didn't work, but uh, there's a part of the Apple Silicon, it's called DCP or Display um, Coprocessor. It's specific to Apple hardware. And we found a couple of bugs and, and they got fixed and it's much more reliable now. And I haven't seen an issue since until today. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> whenever I present, um, I hit a DCP bug, but that's the way it goes, you know. Um, so, so this is an update on Fedora Asahi Remix, so it's, it's, it's simply Fedora for Apple Silicon. Um, so yeah, I'm Eric Kirk and I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I, I work on automotive stuff mostly. Um, so so um, why do we care about all this stuff? So Apple, you guys probably know, but Apple released new ARM-based Apple Silicon device late 2020. As of this month, the entire Mac lineup uses Apple Silicon chips. Um, and why do we care? There's, there's actually a shortage of well upstream ARM devices. Um, so this is one of them that's in the process of getting upstreamed and even the code that isn't upstreamed yet, it's, it's all publicly available and the upstream guys are, are doing their best to keep pushing as much as they can upstream. Um, another cool thing about these devices is the firmware is unlocked out of the box to run third party operating systems. So I'm talking about um, Linux, obviously, but um, there's some guys run OpenBSD on Apple Silicon. Uh, it's this. This is actually a feature of the device. It's 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 not an exploit or anything like that. Um, one thing I find useful is um, the firmware. It's even unlocked onto the EL2 layer, so which means you have um, KVM support and all those goodies included. Um, so they're really really fast. Um, and they're great bang for a buck. Um, you can get some of these devices now for I think like 700 euros, dollars, and they're, they're pretty fast. Um, why do I care specifically? I'm, I work in, with, I said this already, with Red Hat Automotive, and many of the, of the automotive boards are ARM-based, um, so I end up doing work, quite a bit of work that requires me to have some kind of ARM environment. Um, so the Apple Silicon devices allow me to iterate really quickly and build and test my code much more quickly than I would be able to on other devices. And I learned more stuff about modern ARM, hardware and software implementations, kernel space rust, et cetera, just from kind of following the effort and getting involved. Um, yes, so this will give you an idea of the performance. When when um, when I first um, purchased this machine, um, I was using a Raspberry Pi. So this is the number of seconds it takes to build a project I was working with at the time called Lib Camera, which is a C++ code base. And I was u doing my um, development on a Raspberry Pi sometimes, which is the top line. So that's how long it was taken to build Lib Camera. I also created this kind of Fedora container environment on my Android phone. Um, <laughs> it, it worked. <laughs> um, so that's the green and the, the yellow bars. And the red bar is my company issue, issued laptop. That's just an Intel laptop. Um, and funnily enough, this, this Apple Silicon device was even cheaper than my company issue laptop, but it's, it's faster. Um, I, I took those benchmarks like well over a year ago. I think at the time it might have been even a Linux VM running on top of Mac OS, but, but yeah, that just gives you an idea of the outstanding performance. Um, so what makes Fedora Asahi great? Um, 
we have absolutely amazing upstream folk. I don't know if you follow a few of them on Mastodon or Twitter or whatever, but they're, they're really amazing. I can't say how amazing they are. And I'm not going to go through the list of names because I have fear of mispronouncing someone's name, but they're all there. <laughs> uh, we also have great downstream folk. So um, Neil and Davide are in the crowd there. There's Neil. Davide is here. Davide is over there. So, so they're part of the SIG, um, and they're, they're here, obviously. So if, if you ever get um, an opportunity to grab five minutes of their time to pick their brain, I'd, I'd always recommend it. They're outstanding Fedora and CentOS Dream contributors. And we also have Michelle and Lee Flitty and, and many more. Um, so one of the things I really like about this SIG and this community is ev everyone kind of has this upstream everything attitude, if at all possible. Um, so, so that's one thing that's in the spirit of various kind of ARM-related certification, like works with Chromebook or System Ready, or there's a RHEL certification as well. Um, and well upstream to ARM devices aren't as common as they could be in the ARM ecosystem, so I, I really like to see that this community kind of has that attitude. Um, so this is our general workflow. Um, we push as much upstream as, as much as we possibly can, and then we try and propagate it to Fedora, and that also ends up in Fedora Asahi Remix, which has some forked packages just, just to make things work. Um, but this isn't the only workflow we use. Like Sometimes we have some, there's publicly available code. It's not ready to go upstream. So we maintain copers and that kind of thing for that code. That's not quite ready for upstream yet. Um, yeah, this is kind of another thing. Um, in the best case scenario, uh, basically this Fedora Asahi thing doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, you can just install. <laughs> you can just install standard Fedora out of the box, pretty much, on. Um, um, on an Apple Silicon device, so obsolescence would actually be a success. Um, these are just some four packages we um, we have in Copper at the minute. There's there's not as many as you would think. Um, there's U-Boot, Kernel, Kernel Edge, uh, a slightly different version of Meza, and a handful of others. And some of those will become obsolete in time also. Um, Yes, <laughs> there's actually three types of, kind of for Fedora kernels that boot um, on Apple Silicon devices at the moment. So the actual Fedora kernel, like kernel arc, um, that has Apple Silicon, partial Apple Silicon support merged, so it boots, but it's kind of more a boot to shell experience at the moment, like don't expect the accelerated graphics and everything to work. Um, so yeah, we test and enable config as, as support arise upstream. And this is built with 4K page size, which is kind of the most common uh, page size across various CPU architectures. Um, so not everything is upstreamed with support for 4K page size, at least not yet anyway. Um, and the Apple Silicon um, hardware, same Mac OS, runs with 16K page size. Um, so the hardware is actually designed for 16K page size. So if you, if you run the standard Fedora kernel, you take a, you take a small performance hit there. Um, but there are advantages to that because um, you have increased combat compatibility um, when you use a 4K page kernel. So there's, there's trade-offs there. Um, this is one of the kernels um, we maintain. It's the Fedora Sahi kernel. So this uses all the stuff from the last kernel we were talking about, and it merges in another kernel from the upstream guys that adds extra yet to be upstream packages. So we enable even more configs, and we build it with 16K page size instead, which um, gives us increased hardware support on the devices. And this uses software rendered graphics. So it uses simple DRM. If any of you guys are familiar with what that is. Um, and now, and we have another kernel. 
our kernels are based on um, the branches the upstream Asahi guys um, create. So one of those kernels is called kernel edge. I just said I'd describe edge in this context because edge is so fashionable the last few years as a term in general. <laughs> but edge in this context, all it means is a, it's a kernel with additional experimental features. Um, so this uses the last kernel as a base and adds a couple of more patches and more configs. Um, so this, the only difference at present is this one also has accelerated graphics. So as a user, that's the only difference. Um, but under the hood, if, if there's a couple of more differences. Like this is pretty much the only Fedora kernel out. It's the only Fedora kernel out there I'm aware of um, that's built for for us for Linux support. So this is to enable the the kernel space side of the GPU driver. Um, and actually, this is going to be promoted to the main Fedora Asahi kernel in, in the coming weeks or month. So the difference between the two kernels might change. We'll have a discussion about that with upstream and in the SIG and whatever. Um, so we also had Clang LLVM as build dependencies as required by the Rust tool chain because uh, you need those build tools to build Rust code. At, at least at the moment, that's the only compiler that can do it. Um, and we have a fork to Mesa package. But even that fork to Mesa package, all that code is being actively upstream. So that fork may well, um, that could be one of the next packages to disappear um, without giving any timelines. Um, so this is just an example that um, in the recent kernel release, 6.3, I think was released about, I don't know, two months ago, six weeks ago. Right? around that time. Um, so there's many examples of Asahi helping the community as, as a whole. Um, I thought this was a pretty cool one um, because up until 6.3, um, on any big little device, so a device with different types of cores, you had to pin VMs to a specific set of cores. So you couldn't mix match, say, performance cores and efficiency cores. But um, this, this really talented virtualization guy, um, he made it possible so y you could use all the cores in a guest VM on a, on a big little machine. And he used the Sahi Linux to do all the work. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool because um, that didn't benefit Asahi. It benefited loads of ARM SOCs and even there's an x86. Intel chip that has big little cores as well. Yeah. Is it Alder Lake or? Hmm? Is it Alder Lake? Yeah, Alder Lake. That's called the Internet. It's a CMD port. Yeah, yeah. That's essentially this architecture, although it's different. Yeah, yeah. So, it, yeah, it even fixed um, that issue on non ARM architectures as well. So, I thought that was pretty cool because he did all that work on SI. Um, I pretty much gave this talk at FOSDEM. So this is just pointing out some of the differences. Um, there's loads of differences, so I just summarize, summarized a couple. Um, there's been some DCP fixes for HDMI. Um, accelerated graphics have, have come a long way. They're, they're really mature and performance. Um, I don't know if you watched the streams. I, I'm going to talk about them in the next few slides, but um, some of the graphics work that has been going on is pretty amazing. And they have some really demanding games and that running on Apple Silicon now. Um, we have Fedora branding. Um, there's been pay because, <laughs> because most people are running 16K kernels on Asahi Linux, there's been page size fixes and all sorts of user space applications. This is just a couple I listed off the top of my head. Uh, so initial support for DM2 SOC. And, and many more things. Um, this is a slide I added this morning because I was toying around with the idea of showing off the accelerated graphics, but in the interest of time, I don't want to do that. And Asahi Lena, that stream on YouTube, she has so many examples of that. So if you're interested, feel free um, to check out that stream. Hector Martin does streams. Neil Gompla does some streams of downstream work. 
Um, and yeah, that can be pretty interesting. Um, this is a question we get all the time. Uh, can I use Fedora Asahi as, as my daily driver? And I, you may. It depends on what you use it for. I've, I've been using it for over a year now, every day, for my work. But it, it really depends on what you want to use it for. Um, so, so to get an idea of feature complete list on the upstream Asahi wiki, um, that's a good reference point, because it tells you what works and what doesn't. Um, like two examples of things that don't work are sound and camera, although there's progress being made there, especially in sound. Um, but like there are workarounds for these things, like Bluetooth works perfectly, pretty much. Um, you could use a USB camera, et cetera. Um, so I asked a couple of days ago, should I sh share this link? <laughs> And nobody complained, and one or two people said, yeah, sure. Um, so we still deem this unreleased. Um, but this is the link to the installer if you want to try it. Um, it's up to you. Um, it, works, it works pretty well, but don't expect things to be perfect. Um, forks. So back when the Asahi guys initially released, there was loads of different. Um, Asahi forks farming. So one of these is the Leaf Lady fork of Fedora. And he, he's actually a part of the SIG these days. Um, so he has this fork also of Fedora, which it's, it's still maintained to this day. It it's consumes the same pancakes. Uh, <laughs> no, what that's supposed to say is that this is, it's 99% the same as this one. It consumes the same packages, not pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it, it has a more minimal variant of Fedora Asahi, and it, it uses an OS composing tool called MKOSI, whereas the SIG images use Kiwi. Um, another interesting tool Leaf, Leaf has on GitHub, actually, is because Asahi chain loads eventually to a U-boot UEFI environment, you, you can boot over USB if, if you interrupt U-boot at that point. And he has a cool little project, actually, that allows you to create flashable um, USBs pretty, pretty easy. So I think that project's pretty nifty. Um, that should not say kernel age. Um, that's just some various links. Um, and that's it. Any any questions and answers or any questions? I have to ask what is the difference between the Fedora kernel and the official Asahi Linux kernel? Um, so the yeah the question is for YouTube um, for, for the YouTubers. <laughs> uh, what is the difference between the the normal Fedora kernel and the Fedora Asahi kernel? So, oh, I mean, the difference between the Fedora Asahi kernel and the official Asahi kernel. Oh, oh yeah. The, the official Asahi kernel is, is, is more designed to run on Arch. Um, so this kernel is based on the real Fedora kernel. The, the kernel you're referring to is, is designed for Arch and the kernel config options are just completely different, but um, they are very similar. The easier way to answer this is the, I'm going to refer to this as the Arch Asahi kernel. The yeah. one that's captured but built and made from scratch and turned on things one by one until things started working. Yeah. I started from the Fedora K config and then added the stuff that's needed for Apple Silicon hardware and Amazon. So yeah. we use the same patch set on top of an upstream tree. I take his patch set, apply it on top of the Fedora kernel. He puts his things on top of the mainline uh, Torvald tree and then builds it. So that's yeah. the difference. Yeah, yeah. Why I prefer the Fedora kernel is because I know everything that works on this laptop is going to work. I know if I run Podman, for example, that all the kernel configs required for Podman are turned on. But if I use Hector's kernel, or the, that might not necessarily be the case because he, he just turns on the minimal. 
well, whatever is required for him, whereas this Fedora kernel has everything enabled on the standard Fedora kernel plus the Asahi stuff on top, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, the question is, is the Fedora kernel less stable than the Fedora Asahi kernel? Um, The question is, um, is the Fedora kernel nowadays less stable? The, the question is, is the Fedora kernel less stable than the Fedora Asahi kernel? No, 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 no. The other way around. Is the kernel used in Fedora Asahi Linux is less stable than the original Asahi Linux? Oh, the question is, is the Asahi kernel, the Arch kernel, as stable as the Fedora Asahi kernel. Yep. And yes, they're on par. Because um, what like Neil will do, or I will do, um, we, we just merged the, we merged the two kernels, basically. So they, you have the best of both worlds. So yeah, they're on par. So anything you see, most of the things you see Hector do on his streams, you, c you can do it on Fedora also, so yeah. <laughs> Question. Uh, we have a question from Matrix. Uh, how hard is to compile kernel edge in respect to uh, of the Rust drivers being included? <laughs> I can see Neil like, oh my god, it's so much pain. Um, <laughs> it takes me weeks and I <laughs> kernel. Yeah, um, I, repeated question as well, yeah. Okay, so the question is how hard is it to build a Linux kernel with, with Rust support enabled? Um, it's, it's getting better, it used to be more difficult. I even have a contribution that made it slightly easier. Um, it's, <laughs> it's pretty easy if you, you just install Clang LLVM tools and it works. But we, we do have an issue at the moment as regards versioning. Um, you have to have a specific version of the Rust compiler uh, for it to build without errors. And an issue we're starting to see kind of regularly is Fedora Rawhide, or not even Rawhide, just uh, will bump their version of uh, Rust C. And the kernel guys haven't arrived there yet. So we'll start to see build failures. Um, so that's an issue for us. Uh, we're talking about long term solutions. That problem, David, is, has um, something ready. Well, So for, so for the YouTubers, just to, just to summarize the conversation in the room, um, we haven't fully decided on a long-term solution, but what, what we're thinking of is we're thinking of building kind of a, a kernel Rust package that basically pins the Rust compiler to a certain version just for building the kernel. Um, but we haven't fully teased that out yet, so um, yeah, but it's in progress. Are there any other questions on the matrix? Or? Okay. If there are no other questions, I guess that's it.